everybody, welcome into the show. I'm Brian Keating. He's Carson Cunningham. It is time crash the boards. To crash the boards. Can you believe it? The Thunder are down to the final week of the regular season. We're going to have playoff games <laughs> next weekend. Hard to believe. It's been a wild ride and a fun ride, no doubt. With it's Russell been a fun Westbrook. ride. Yeah, we really didn't know what to expect when he started out this year with no Kevin Durant. What was Russell Westbrook going to do? I mean, he was only sensational the entire season. Uh, pretty remarkable. So, all right, let's do it this way. I, I want to ask some questions, look big picture, and sort of remember a few things about uh, really a fun season. Favorite moment this year? There's a lot to pick from. Oh, this is this is easy for me. This is <laughs> okay. so easy. Every time you we call up some uh, Russell Westbrook highlights for our shows, yeah, I go directly to. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. The Houston Hammer. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Early on in the season against the Houston Rockets, we're yeah. still kind of figuring out what this team's gonna look like. And we found out Russell Westbrook is the best clutch player in the entire NBA. A left-handed slam over Clint Capella, one of the better shot blockers yep. in the NBA. And my favorite part about this play, Brian, Russell Westbrook is an alpha with a capital A. When he makes a big play, he gets so jacked, he does not <laughs> want to beat you. He wants to end you. And at the end of this play, he beats his chest yeah. and stomps. He is that in the, the – I am Russell Westbrook. He – Unlike any player I've ever seen, he lets the moment succumb him, and he just goes completely nuts, and it was super fun to watch. The Houston Hammer will always – and the ESPN ranked it as the best play in the NBA during the All-Star break. I don't think that's changed. I think it's the best play <laughs> in the entire NBA this season. It was pretty great, and you're right. I mean, he is like the alpha in the, in the NBA. So intense. No question. You know, I could have picked a lot of the buzzer beaters. When you think about the uh, – the Orlando game when he had 57 points and got him to overtime and had the triple-double and all the record-breaking moments. For me, the biggest game of the season and the biggest moment of the season, it was the moment, the cupcake game. And, and I think it was the game where Oklahoma City got to vent. It was a playoff. It was like a Western Finals oh. atmosphere. Yes. The game didn't even matter. And then Russell Westbrook was awesome. The hate is real. The vitriol is real. He said, I'm coming. And for Sam Presti, that's a challenge this offseason to get Oklahoma City in the I'm coming for you, Kevin. Give Russell a shot. Give Russell a shot at them. But that was the moment. That's what we're going to remember. Well, Russ had played coy all along. They wouldn't talk about Kevin. And then in the game, you saw the look on his oh. face. That said it all about how he feels about Kevin Durant. Andre Robertson nose to nose with Kevin <laughs> yeah. Durant. It's good stuff. Ke uh, Sam needs to get Russ some reinforcements. And a great environment in Oklahoma yeah, City. That the, was the Thunder fans were exceptional that night. Yeah. No question about it. All right. Uh, it, it appears basically almost signed, sealed, and delivered that the Thunder are going to play the Houston Rockets. But is that the right matchup? There, there's still a chance maybe they could fall back and, and play the Spurs. Is that the right matchup? Who do you want to play? Well, never in my wildest dreams did I say, Spurs me. <laughs> give me the Spurs. Know, You've been saying it for weeks. I want to give you I credit. Have, yeah. you, you were asking me, would you rather play the Spurs instead of the Rockets? Like, what are you talking about? Popovich, Kawhi, get them out of here. I don't want any of that. Yeah. But the Rockets force the Thunder to go small. And what yep. does that mean? A guy like Jeremy Grant, who really doesn't play for the most part against the better teams in the NBA, except when they have to go small. So Jeremy Grant would have to play a bigger role than maybe he's used to against the Rockets. And for me, I would much rather have Ennis Cantor playing big minutes, obviously Steven Adams. Other players on the roster need to be playing more minutes than Jeremy Grant. So, and I just I worry about the Thunder being able to keep up with the Rockets' three-point shooting. They are so good at shooting. So I'd love to see Pau Gasol. Patty Mills. Play the big guys. Give me the Spurs. Play the big guys. Give me all the Riverwalk, <laughs> all the Mexican food you can have down there in San Antonio. Yeah, it's the Spurs because the Thunder just have all those big guys, at least in a series against San Antonio. You could throw them out there and at least play the way that you want to play. I'm right. not sure you can do that against Houston. Houston has the ability to shoot you out of that series fast. They're Anybody. Gonna shoot, they're going to shoot 40 or 50 threes a game. So, if they're making shots, they're almost impossible to beat, and that includes the Warriors. Exactly. So, give me the Spurs, although, look, they're going to play the Houston Rockets. We might as well make our plans to we, go down we, to Houston. We might as well. But it's going to be the Rockets. It's going to be the Rockets. Never did I ever think, and, you know, the Spurs really, they have, what, one all-star in Kawhi? And yeah, then, I mean, you know. It's amazing that Pavich has them where they are, despite, you know, real, no real stars now, Kawhi, other than Kawhi. Kawhi's 
Right. He's MVP good. But like like the Thunder, they have one star. Yeah, no, you're six, right about that. And yeah. the Spurs you are, are somehow win 60 games every that. year. Speaking of that uh, one all-star, Houston has that one all-star too. And um, those are the two leading candidates for the MVP. So who's the MVP? It goes to? Well, the other night you and I were watching Russell do his thing. Just yes. going absolutely ballistic. And we're just we're falling out of our chair. We're exclaiming like exclamation points. Russell Westbrook has put an exclamation point on his MVP candidacy. Yep. The last two weeks have been nothing short of mesmerizing. The way, the way he has just willed this team to wins, obviously the triple-double streak. I just don't think you can deny a guy who's number one in scoring, number one in plus-minus, <laughs> number one in clutch stats. The stats say the Thunder would be a 19-win team with Russell not on the floor. That's a crazy stat. 19-win 19 team. That is how team. much he is willing this team to the sixth seed. And everyone wants to say, well, the MVP's never been given to someone below uh, – uh, the four spot in the in the conference standings. Well, no one's ever been below the two spot either, and that's where the Rockets are. They're in the three. So it would still be unprecedented since 1988, in fact, is the last time they gave someone not in the top two spots. So if you're going to pl- claim the wins category, the win-loss category, you got to throw Harden out too. It's the top two that usually get MVP. So three, six, not much difference. The big difference is the triple doubles and the moments we will remember. No one's had all these triple doubles that, you know, hadn't been done – since 1962 either. It is the Brody. Yeah. The Brody is the MVP. And I said I thought James Harden was going to win it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I think the Brody's going to win it. Think so? I think the Brody's going to win it. I think when Penn meets pad for the voters yeah. and they just look at the stats, the, the difference in wins is pretty negligible considering just the unearthly things that Russell Westbrook's done. He's going to win it, I think. Well, He's Carson. We don't find out till June 26th. I know, that's crazy. For Carson, I'm Brian. We have the playoffs next week. It's Crashing Boys.